Hey guys, welcome back. This is the lecture number 75 from our bootcamp series. In this lecture, we're gonna discuss about Webpacker in brief. Since we use Rails 6 version for this bootcamp course and the Rails 6 uses Webpacker to serve the assets by default. All prior versions before Rails 6 like uh, up to Rails 5.x using the sprockets for managing the assets like JavaScript, CSS, images and other static files as default but in Rails 6, Webpacker replaced the sprockets so it's necessary to know a bit about uh, the Webpacker. However, you can still use the sprockets for managing and serving assets but for that you have to do some configuration as this does not remain the default in Rails 6. Uh, because Rails 6 only serves the CSS uh, using sprockets, but for handling the JavaScript, uh, there is a Webpacker. Okay, so now let's understand what is Webpacker. Webpacker is a Rails wrapper around the Webpack build system that provides a standard Webpack configuration and reasonable defaults. Okay, now what is Webpack? So the goal of Webpack or any front-end build system is to allow you to write your front-end code in a way that it is convenient for the developers and then package that code in a way that is convenient for the browsers. With Webpack, you can manage JavaScript, CSS and static assets like images or fonts. Webpack will allow you to write your code, reference other code in your application, transform your code and combine your code into easily downloadable packs. Okay. Now, we need to understand that what is the difference between sprockets and webpacker okay so sprockets which was designed to be used with rails is simpler to integrate because code can be added to the sprockets via a ruby gem for example with previous version of a rails i mean up to rails 5.x uh, rails is using gem for adding bootstrap font awesome icon jquery libraries like uh, autocomplete select ties suite alerts and so on and you can still find the gem for these libraries like uh, for using bootstrap there are two versions uh, available for uh, rails that is uh, using uh, simple bootstrap and that bootstrap sas okay however webpacker is better at uh, integration with more current javascript tools and npm packages and allow you a wider range of integration okay new rails application are configured to, to use webpacker for javascript and s Prockets for CSS, although you can do CSS in Webpack as well. Okay, you should choose Webpacker over Sprockets on a new project if you want to use NPM packages or want to access the most current JavaScript features and tool. Here by most current JavaScript features and tool, I mean that if you want to avoid using Ruby gems for JavaScript plugins and jQuery plugins and for CSS plugins, then you can use NPM packages or Yarn packages uh, for those plugins and then you can use Webpacker to integrate them in your project. Okay. However, Sprockets is still a good choice and you should choose Sprocket over Webpacker for legacy application where migration might be costly. Okay. If you want to integrate using gems or if you have a very small amount of code to package. For example, uh, if you have a Rails application where you're working with Rails 4 or Rails 5 or Rails 3 application, okay, then introducing Webpack in such legacy application might be very costly because it uh, might uh, cause a high development cost, cost and all that. So in that case, you can go with uh, sprockets and you can choose the sprockets over Webpacker. Okay, now let's see at what place we handle all these steps. Okay, so uh, in older version of Rails, what we uh, received for managing assets that you can see the assets folder in app. Okay, so in Rails up to Rails 5, there was a folder like JavaScript where you manage all your JavaScript and the style sheet which is still there. You can manage your all of style sheets here. Okay, for example, you can see that here is application.css and you can require all your CSS steps here. Okay, and to manage JavaScript in Rails 6, there is a JavaScript folder in app. Okay, and in the JavaScript, you can find two folders that is one for channels and one for packs. Okay, so the channel is for managing the action cable related stuff and the pack is containing your application.js and you can import your JavaScript packages here. However, if you want, you can package your style sheet here as well 
in the web packer format okay and we will see that how to do that in you know, how we can integrate our bootstrap css using web packer in the very next lecture as well okay and we will use this application.js file in next lecture when we install bootstrap using yar in our course project okay so that's a brief about the web packer and why we should use sprockets in new URLs version okay or why we should use this over sprockets in new URLs version okay however in today's date uh, till the date i'm uh, uh, recording this lecture that rails 7 has been launched already and in this version rails removed the web packer i mean web packer is not a default setup in rails 7 application but an optional one okay so if you practice this course on rails if you are practicing this course on rails 7 version then you have to follow this with import map or you can avoid using web packer okay uh, by the way uh, i would encourage you to uh, follow this step with the web packer because you must have idea about that because for example if you get the job or if you are already working at the job then you don't know that at uh, what rails application you have to face the web packer stuffs okay however if you want to use css and bootstrap uh, and javascript uh, using rails 7 then i already prepare a video for that and you can find the link of that lecture in the description of this video okay so thanks for watching this and let's meet into the next lecture where we will install bootstrap and javascript and popper into our course project okay so let's meet in the next lecture and till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe